You're forgetting. I think. How much have you drank? Not much, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I should be on my game better tonight. You're not. You're not uh, drunk enough to where you're starting to sing chicken hunting. I'm not drunk at all. No. Prompted. Oh God, okay. that wasn't drunk. That was shit face hammered. Do you miss going to the video store, Acid Wash Jeans, and MTV with music? I know we do. Welcome to Mike and Anthony Soda Pop Culture Club. Me, Mike, along with my co-host, Antoine. Clint Eastwood. Yes. Bring our take on a classic movie every Monday from the 80s, 90s, and beyond, during which we will play the game and open up a six-pack of our favorite scenes. We also point out a couple of generic scenes as well, and at the end of the show, we'll rate the movie 1 to 24 cans. One can is being drugged by a horse through the town square. And 24 cans is anything other than that, really. Moonwalking to get out of a jam, I guess. (laughs) Getting back home to Elizabeth Shue. Oh, yeah, get back home to the shoe. Yeah, it was barely in that movie. But anyway, but before we get to all that, we want to let you know. We want to do movies that you suggest because we like you. We try to anyways, right? And there are four ways to do this. One is join our Patreon. If you suggest it there, we'll just do it. We'll get to it. It'll be on the schedule too. If you want us to do your movie and you just can't wait, you know, it's the thing you want to done right now. We have a fast pass. If you send us $25 to our Venmo or PayPal, which is at Soda Pop Culture Club, we'll just do it. The next thing we do interrupts our flow, but we'll get it for you. And we have a third way, which is going to our website, sodapopcultureclub.com. There's a portal on there. You just put what you want us to do, and maybe we do it. It's not a guarantee there. That's if we just feel like it. And you can also buy merch, see our schedule, things like that. Um, And then Anthony has another way, another great way. Yes. Send Mike dirty pictures of your great great grandparents. Uh, and yeah, your movie is good as done. Or you could also leave or, us a review on Apple Podcasts, and in your review, drop the movie you'd like us to review. Yes, do that. We like that. I like that one the best. I really would like someone to do that. No one's done it yet. I'll just be honest there. But if one of you do it, that would just make me so happy. Yeah, they give us if reviews. Me nobody, happy is your goal. Nobody putting their movie suggestions in there, so. That's really weird because it's free. Right. <laughs> it's, it's like, I mean, it's like fucking herpes. It's free. It's free. And free to you, anyone. And you get it forever. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and just a couple more things. Don't forget to share a show with your friends and check out our Instagram at Mike and Anthony, where we post memes that are dedicated to the movies that we do typically. Try to be funny. Probably not. You won't laugh very hard, but you'll be entertained, maybe. Hopefully. That type of thing. So anyways, and I think that's it. That's all I have. That's, that's it. it. That's, we got. that's it. Show's over. What do you want? You want me to hit the trailer? Yeah, go for it. From out of the West, in a cloud of dust, a thunder of hooves, and a mighty... Great Scott. I know, this is heavy. And dance! This summer, Marty and Doc go back one more time for their greatest adventure of all... Doc's living in the past. Just try it, Tanner! But he's about to be history. What kind of a future do you call that? I'm going back to 1885 and I'm bringing you home. It's the last roundup. Come on, run! It's the final showdown. Hey, lighten up, jerk! Where Marty makes a name for himself. What's your name, dude? Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. What kind of stupid name is that? Doc meets his mate. You saved my life. I'm a proud at your service. And Tannen meets his match. I'll hunt you and shoot you down like a duck. It's dog, Buford. Shoot him down like a dog. Michael J. Fox. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? 7-Eleven. Christopher Lloyd. There's a fella that can't hold his liquor. And Mary Steenburgen. I never ever met a man like you before. <clears throat> Gentlemen, excuse me, but my friend and I have to catch a train. This 
summer, Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis invite you... Come on, Marty! ...to the Rough Rider, <laughs> Rip Roar, Rootin' Tootin', Straight Shootin'. Is this a hold up? It's a science experiment! Rousing conclusion of... Back to the Future. Cut the festivities begin! Back to the Future, Part 3. There we go. Part 3. Third time's a charm. Yeah, that uh, that's an exciting trailer, really. <laughs> it's really, when it comes to trailers, you know, we never rate yeah. those, but it yeah. was pretty good. It was actually pretty good, I gotta say. If you watch it, too, because it shows you all the things. Yeah. Without showing you all the things, you know kind of what you want but it's it, not like a michael bay it uh, showed michael you all bay the is things. better it showed you all the things michael bay is better he's like an artiste michael bay's what his trailers yes well because his trailers are better than his movies yeah yeah his trailer game is like is like the stuff man the trailer game and stuff and speaking of the game the game do you know what time it is time for the game it's time for the game, and everybody knows what the game is. The game is where I am going to read, Anthony, three movie reviews. Two of them are real. One of them is fake, which I have written, and he is going to guess which one that is because you want to know something? For the first time in a long time last week, he tasted victory, and maybe he's feeling it now. Maybe he's on a hot streak. We'll have to see. You know I what? Know. what? I tasted victory last time, mm-hmm. and I still didn't give a shit. About playing this game. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he doesn't like playing the game. You know, people tend to quit not like playing games that they don't, aren't good at. And I think that's his No, problem. it's not even that. I've never really enjoyed this game. I've enjoyed it. It makes me so happy to watch you. Like, I don't know why. It just, it just does. It just makes me happy. So try and be part of my happiness. You know what we should do? We should do the blockbuster game. What, the... Where you say, yeah, but you can't, that doesn't really, It's a, this yeah. is an audio podcast. Right. When we get into the charades part, I don't know how that's going to work. We would leave out or just have people leave it to their imagination. I don't know. You want me to do the thing where I give you a movie quote and you try to guess the movie. I know what yeah, you Yeah, that too. Jesus. But there's so I mean, many movies that you won't guess. I don't think that's very if fair. If you do movies I've seen, which is a fucking lot of them. Like if I just use a random, go to the restroom, Joey. No, you don't not know what, something stupid like that. You know, <laughs> I'll be back. And then you'll think Terminator. No, it just was, uh, it was uh, Billy Crystal. And, uh, you know, her, what's See, it called? You Harry just Sally. The game. You're just be an idiot like that. I would be. Anyways, are you ready for this game? No, but go ahead. All right, here we go. Vincent Canby, New York Times. Except for Mr. Lloyd, the film is so sweet natured and bland that it is almost instantly forgettable. Rob Thomas, Capital News. This would have been a better movie if Clint Eastwood would have really been in it. Brian McKay, eFilmCritic.com. The weakest of the trilogy, but this franchise never got old. Read the second one again. Rob Thomas, Capital News. Yeah. This would have been a better movie if Clint Eastwood would have really been in it. I'm going to go with the second one. And why is that? Just because I think you're screwing with me again with the Rob Thomas thing. You are fucking correct. There we go. I tried to fuck with you. And last week it was Rob Thomas of the Capital Times. So I really tried to fuck with you. Yep. So. (laughs) Yes. Man, I'm glad you sniffed that out. I tried to give you one. Well, the other one sounded too realistic. The third one. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is realistic. I mean, it is. And the first one's real. So. There you go. They're all kind of negative. Um, but what's funny, I mean, you, you go ahead and do your numbers, because when you look at the numbers, it's actually not as negative of a movie. No, it's not. Um, surprisingly, not at all. Um, so here's our breakdown. Directed once again by Robert Zemeckis, starring Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Leah Thompson, Thomas F. Wilson, and Mary Steenburgen. Back to the Future 3 was released on May 25th, 1990, taking in $245.1 million at the box office. Against, again, as part two, a $40 million budget, same budget. It scores 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb and 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. 
You know, I have a question about that. You know, this is like, did they just take eighty million dollars and shoot them back to back? They shot it back to back, I think, or pretty much like concurrently. I thought. I thought they they did them at the same time. So, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. They spend eighty million all together and just split it because they shot them basically together. Is it just slashing the budget in half as far as reported budget? I'm just kind of assuming that. That's what I'm thinking. It has to be because I mean, unless it was forty million for both. And they because they did them both at the same time. That is very possible, but I doubt it. I mean, I know I think had to it, spend some money, right? I mean, you figure the first one was nineteen million. Yes. So you got to figure, obviously, sequels. You're putting more money into it. Yeah. So there's no way they're doing each of those for twenty million. I, I you know, hey, although you know the first one is the best, and it was done for the least. So true story. I mean, what can what can one. you do? The first one, almost 99% of the time, is the best, though. It is. It is. Yeah. Now, this one, you know, I like... The, I'm just going to say up front that I like this one. When it comes to them, I, I, I think that I like this one a little better than two. Yeah. I'm just telling you up front. Um, I kind of like the Western angle, um, which I know you're not a fan of Westerns. Getting him to watch a Western's like, ugh. Here's the th- yeah, I'm not a fan of Westerns. Because you're an idiot. Go ahead. Um, the thing is, uh, at this point, it's kind of like, what else What else were you going to do? You've been to, you know, back to the 50s. You went to the future. There's really nothing else to do but go way far back in time. I agree. I agree with that. You I, had no I, choice. I, I think you and I both said already that part of the flaws of number two is that it went in the future. And because it did that, it kind of can hurt it a little. While when you go backwards to the Wild West, you know, you can only take your world there. So no shit. I mean, because guess what? In fucking 1885, I wasn't promised a fucking hoverboard. So I'm okay with that. Yes, <laughs> you're okay with that. I knew what they had back then. A, a steam engine train. I, I know what that is. Hardcore rough whiskey and spittoons. Okay, whatever. Move on. Whiskey that, that burns the counter. Now, yep. do you think this... Now, the, the way this opens up, we know how the last one ended. Do you like the opening where he runs back and then tells him the thing and that's the open? And then, you, you know, like, do you like that opening of this? It's fine. I mean, yeah, because he kind of... And he takes him back to the thing. I thought, I thought there was a little drag... In the beginning, yeah. just a little, but not a lot. I mean, it's kind of cool how they have to go dig up the the DeLorean. Well, here, and, and so get all that. What I would say is, um, you know, I was I was fine with the opening because you got to remember back when this came out. We talked about this before. It came out like six months after Part Two, which that doesn't you never see that. You know what I never. mean? Never. That never, never happens. So. You're already, you're still invested in part two to the point that this is just, you know, being a continuation of it. Yeah. It's just like, literally, it's like you put, you just waited a few months before you put the second Titanic VHS in. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that is what it is, I guess. But, but this is better than Titanic. So that's, there's that. Well, it's because Doc Brown and Marty McFly have way more chemistry than Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. There's that, and I think uh, Doc Brown and his uh, Clara and Emmett's love story is a little better than um, Leonardo's and Kate Winslet's. Sorry. And and Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston's. Oh, definitely that. I mean, everyone is. I mean, uh, mean, Buford Tannen has a better relationship with Um, Marty McFly. (laughs) It's a love story. I got a question for you real quick. And I don't know. I don't want to spoil any generics you have or anything. Is this your favorite version of Biff? Yes. Okay, I figured it was. I was just curious. It is the... Okay. Because in the Old West, he could be an idiot, more of an idiot, and he didn't overplay it because I think it's because of the cowboy side of it. I didn't think it allowed the the actor to overplay the dumbness. Uh, The dumbness was natural in a character that was from a time where they weren't as smart sometimes, you know? And he didn't sound like a big idiot, you know, all the time. Cause he did that whole Southern draw thing, you know? So, so that it, was, that was his role. That's what yeah. he was meant to be. I think bit. that was where okay. he nailed it. Gotcha. That to me, an old Biff and this Biff, you know, 
those two are probably where he nails it. Old you know? is good, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Biff, but Biff, uh, Biff in high school and Biff, you know, uh, wrecking the car and drinking beer. And then the sycophant Biff uh, waxing the cars is a problem. I mean, he, he goes from he goes to being a bitch. I mean, I, I would never have guessed that. You I don't know, think he would have just stayed. Mar- I don't think he was stayed his bitch. What's uh, Mar- right. his one, bitch. one punch when he wasn't looking by George McFly that just changed everybody's fucking lives. Yeah, George. George made him his bitch. <laughs> one punch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. But that you know that's uh, some things there. But I, before we get to all that, I, I want to go over a six pack because we were talking about. I was talking about unearthing the uh, DeLorean. Yeah. And one of the things we got at the end of the last one was the 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 letter. And in the letter, he sent the map to find the DeLorean, and he sent the schematic on how to fix it. And I think that's the most interesting part. And I don't think I ever back then, like when I got older, realized and understood what that meant. Um, I knew looking at the DeLorean that it was weird how it had to be fixed. But right. But when he looks at the microchip and says, I can't believe all that's being done in here. And then when you look what replaced it, it was that big ass wooden tube <laughs> vacuum tube board on the front of the fucking machine mm-hmm. the, all of that little thing is in that one big thing so i i really like that i like the i call it the 50s tech conversion yeah like, yeah we go to the tech and the tires being all big ass and round not profiled or anything yeah but really i that's my six pack is that that those things they had to do there i like that a lot i do like that all some right. of my favorites so yeah but that, but the vacuum tube shit. But you know, it makes me think. I have a weird uncle that he's a savant with uh, fixing things with vacuum tubes and shit. It's really weird. It makes me think of him and like he could probably make anything work with that shit. Can he make a time machine? No, but if you okay. had a real jukebox, he used to work on them, and he could fix any jukebox. That's nice. That's, yeah, yeah. And he had this big old case of uh, that's that now would probably go for thousands of dollars. You open it up, it had every type of tube you could think of in it. People love those things, man. People buy that shit. People buy it. Tubes. Yeah, tubes. The tubes. I'm in the you know. tube business. Yeah, <laughs> the tube. The tubes. They weren't the. They did that song about. Uh, what's that one? I can't remember the song. They did a song where they where they go on that. It's. A, I remember the music video where you get on the ride and you go through the tunnel of love. And the guy's singing. Ooh, she's the she's a lady or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember it. But it's a pretty okay. good video. I can't remember right. <laughs> Fuck it. Hey, oh man. It's a great antidote, Mike. You don't know anything about it other than some fucking tunnel. I gotta tell you, you talk about video. So like lately for some reason. She's um, one in a million girls. Oh, yeah, one in a million. That's the tubes. How the, can uh, I lie? Speaking of videos, sorry. Um I keep like randomly like it seems like maybe once a week or so in the evening, yeah. I flip on House of Pop on MTV. Oh. Because they're playing all fucking, you know, 80s and 90s videos. So, yeah. like, I'll flip it on for a little bit, just like in the background, whatever. Do you ever go to um, the Roku TV live channels and they have, like, Vivo 70s, yeah. 80s? Yeah. And- yes, I've seen that. And I go, I flip between those and like, I'll watch some seventies music videos, some eighties. Well, this, uh, what I flipped on, it was actually, I think it was yesterday. It was yesterday or the day before fucking Billy Idol's dancing with myself. Oh yeah. Damn. I remember that being a cool video and it's just not now like, wow. Yeah. That's low budgety fuck shit right there. Or my favorite one. What's the one uh, with the, where he's, where he, Rock the Cradle of Love. Cradle of Love. Yeah, that song when you get that video about where the thirteen year old girl or whatever is trying to seduce the guy. <laughs> Wants to play her cassette tape. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that yeah, some of those videos don't age very well. <laughs> uh none of them age very well. <laughs> no, they don't. So they don't. I got a question for you though. Um just as far as with the back to the future, okay? If you had that ability, <laughs> what time period would you most like to visit? Well, I mean, it depends on any what decade, my... any decade, I guess. Like uh, if you could go back to the old West or just whatever. Personally, I would totally use it for financial gain. So it would be whatever I no, can no, no. do. Not saying that. I know, I know you. that you're not saying, saying that. 
I'm interpreting that. What would you just want? No, you're the fucking idiot. You dumbass. Like, don't you're the one that goes on cruises all the time. You like to visit all these places. I'm saying if you could visit any time period, what time period would you most like to visit and experience for a week? Um, would they grab me and burn me as a heretic just on site? Probably. I would. So I'm assuming they would. <laughs> so we're probably looking. I want to stay somewhere nearer modern times. Um, boy, you know, here's the problem. And, and I don't want to sound like a social justice warrior type of cat. But when you go back in time, you've got to buy into some of the misogynistic, it's, no, it's racist bullshit for, okay. of the time in order to survive. It's visiting for a week. So here's the other thing. Yeah, so I'm visiting I for a week. Hold on. I, and I don't mean like, you know, because when people, like if you throw that question around to people, it'd be like, oh, I want to go see this specific event. I don't mean anything like that. I just mean like what time period would you just like to experience like a day in the life of for a week? You know, uh, what would you like to live in the 50s or the whatever? I mean, you know, I'll tell you this. Music wise, the 60s. Like yeah. if I could live in that decade and experience the music and and all that, I wouldn't be burned like a, a, as a heretic like I would maybe in the 1880s or 70s or something. You know, like the Wild West era would be cool, but, you yeah. know, I'd want to do that. You know, you know what it makes me think of? Westworld. You know what Westworld is? Yes. Yep. Okay. It, see, the reason I'd want to go back then is I'd want to be able to experience some of the lawlessness, maybe rob a bank. There you, you know, go. like in Westworld, you could kill things. You can, you, can, you know, you could have your fun. That's what I'm saying. But I actually feel like I'd probably just go back to the 80s for one last trip. 80s would be good. Um, Another week in the 80s. That'd be nice. But I think we've, you know. Especially now, though, because like I was a kid then. I I remember probably more than you because I'm a little older, but. But I'm going to say that the thing that I learn as I get older and look back at the 80s, the 80s I saw was more of a bubblegum look of it. And when you look at what really was going on more than beyond just some of the pop culture things, it's actually a shit decade. And I don't know if I'd want to experience that because now my age, I would experience no. it and understand the shit. You no, know, you get, again, though, you're, you're kind of missing my point. You're taking this like... Way no, I'm too taking, as, as taking a it too in depth, though. Oh, that goes old. along with like you'd want to go see a specific event or anything like that. Like, it's just it's not go, specific. Like I'm saying, you go back into the 80s just because. Hey, guess what? I want to fucking go to the mall in the 80s. Yeah, I would love to go. I want to the mall go hit up a skating rink a couple times. Like, go to the arcade, shit like that, where shit was real. I want to go to the mall like they did in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Eat at the pizza place. Go to the movies. I get it. I'm Bank with you. Chick in the dugout. Uh, underage chick. <laughs> Say it once again. Oh. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah. Do you have any six packs or anything in this movie, or yours? I do. do you got, what do you got going on? Give me one. Give me. Just give you one. Give me one. Yeah. Okay. I gave you one. Uh, my my first one I will give is Marty's badass Western outfit. Oh yeah. Shit. Uh, it's a good thing the bear ate the boots, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Because, yeah, that was shit. That, that was fucking good stuff. It was a badass outfit. I mean, this I, was, so there's nowhere near as iconic as his outfit in part two. Or part one, for that matter, actually, with the life preserver. But, I, I think they tried. I think they really tried I, to. I think they were kind of trying to, yeah, get some juice into that outfit. But I will say, um, I like when Doc Brown says, who dressed you in that ridiculous outfit? <laughs> you did. <laughs> but you got to remember, you. that's his 1950s self, you know? So really, he's a different person. Right. Almost. And that's why when you start thinking of the time and how things can be changed, it's hard it's like you can't that like that like you know how I'm always saying well they could just change it by making a different choice later on which they still could have in this whole thing like we've said they they still could have made different choices that never brought them there you know they could have rechose you know all those things but they never do 
But it makes me wonder because he talks about string theory and timelines. Is there still those separate timelines existing? I don't know. It's not in them anymore. Right. I don't know yeah. what the fuck's going on with at this. Somewhere point. Biff is the millionaire that shot his dad right. still. I mean, because it did exist for a moment. You just now have shifted your timeline. Right. Did you shift or did you completely redo erase. it and change it and erase it? The well, way they try to imply you know it is the erasing. It's erasing, yes, because it's just like the picture. With, them with the being stone, erased. with the tombstone. The tombstone, and then in the first one, the picture of his brother and sister yes. they're getting erased. So and yeah. the and the newspaper with Doc Brown in the second one, and the and the kid and with his kid early on in the movie. Yeah, but but yeah, right. I mean it, it, they imply it's erasing, but is it erasing from that timeline? But it, the timeline still exists somewhere else. That's why I like the time travel rules in, in Back to the Future are kind of wonky. And I always felt that things could have been avoided well, if they just made different I don't choices. feel like we really had a concrete set of rules. Yeah, true. Oh. We yeah, well, you're right. We kind of kind of make them up as they go along. I think they, <laughs> I think that would probably ruin the movie if you had too many specific rules in it. Too many rules does ruin the world, doesn't it? Rule number 1. Don't talk about time travel. Rule number 2. Don't talk, <laughs> don't about, talk time. about time travel. Oh man, I, I would love well, to. Number three, don't fuck your mother. Oh well, that's hey, Marty learned that one the hard way. Uh, <laughs> I hope he didn't. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but you know, but he did think his mom was hot. You know, no, <laughs> yes, he, he did. did. Mom, I you're, hot. Said- you're hot. You're hot. You remember that? Yeah, he said she was hot. Mm-mm. He was saying she was hot. No, he didn't. When? In the um, the first one? No, he just said you're 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 my my. He's trying no, to say he said, mom. He said huh. He said huh. Like he was gonna say hot. No, he, he did. Uh, he no. did. I. You know what? No. There's very few things I can remember, but that one I do. No, and then you have to show me proof of that because I do not. Agree I'm not going to show you proof. I'm that just going to make happen. you look for it. It didn't happen. It did. No, I don't remember that. Well, I guess you can't remember, remember everything it the way you want to. Just I guess you don't really remember awesome. everything, sir. I know I don't fucking remember everything. <laughs> remember? Well, I yeah. mentioned this before. Index card. Everything I know can fit onto one of those. <laughs> your name. And I'm not talking about the <laughs> and your the, birthday. Like, the big four by six index cards for smart kids. I want to do the big flash cards. I'm talking about the little three by five. Oh, oh wow. Three by five. <laughs> hey, three by, um, three by five in 14 point font. 14. <laughs> Everything I know would fit on that. <laughs> I'm going to shoot back just the front. I'm going to shoot my second six pack at you because there's more than one thing really in it, but it's more of a, 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 a compilation. Um, and what that is, is we get my six pack is we get some of the hints in other movies landing. Um, when it comes to like Marty says, great Scott and doc says heavy. Yeah. You know, um, Marty's strange sleeping position. We saw that again when they're waiting for the train. Um, his, his weird arm behind the back. I don't know. Uh, waking up and thinking it's a dream. Mm -hmm. Um, the manure came back. And the one that I thought, yeah, the one, the clever one I thought that they used to set up this movie really well was the, the, um, the Clint Eastwood gag with the stove door on his, yeah, as a bulletproof vest, because you know, that's the scene in two where Biff goes nuts with the chicks in the hot tub. Oh, bulletproof vest. You know, he sees it every time he gets surprised because he's a moron, of course. Oh yeah. Duh. (laughs) You know, haven't seen that before like 8,000 times. But yeah, but all those little gags, and there's more I'm probably forgetting um, that that just land, uh, and and it's pretty cool um, to see all that. And they didn't do it too heavy handedly. That's the key. Mm-hmm. It felt right. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, just like it wasn't it winking at us, you know, like yeah, exactly. It's going, ha ha! Look what we did. Look what we did again. <laughs> look at you guys, you stupid ass audience. I and another one I like is that. We got to see them with the clock when it the picture. First got hooked, got made work, was yeah. made to work. And we got to see them when they were there for its end. 
it's kind of mm-hmm. interesting. We got to see that too. Like those little things. Yeah, I, that... I think the, the nods were good. I agree. <clears throat> um, but yeah, <clears throat> the other, I, I think another thing with that too, though, I think that that actually helped was again, the fact that it came out so quick after the last one. Oh, it's still fresh. You know what I mean? So it's not it's not some sequel you did five or ten years later, and you're throwing all the shit back in there, because then that's when it gets old, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's continuous like that, and you don't have that big time gap. Because then, it, like, when you have that big time gap, it's almost, that, that's when, you know, as an audience, you're like, you couldn't fucking think of anything else to do. You know what it reminds me of? It's like the last episode of a season where they leave you on the cliffhanger and then the next year they pick up where it left off. That's kind of what it was. And you right. don't feel right. like it's been a ton of time. You right. feel like, you know, it's just been then, a few months. Like, you know, you get those sequels where they throw all this shit in and it, it's then it's more like an episode of a show where they get lazy and just do a remaster shit and just show you. Yeah, old yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, the, yeah, a lazy show. We don't want that. This, that didn't feel lazy. That's the one thing. It, it just doesn't feel lazy. This movie didn't feel because it's a whole different set it's a whole different vibe um i I like and like i said i like the the western vibe i what about claire we haven't gotten into her Mm -hmm. doc's love story is it the best love story in the series because really marty's i mean we don't really see him with her that much when you think about it we have a love story up until now yeah who we don't have a love story up until now because I Marty mean, has a love interest, but they haven't love done interest, anything. Not a love story. That's what I'm saying. There's no love story there. All he wanted to do is have sex with her in the back of the four by four. Out at the lake. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we don't have that. Yeah. We and don't have that. Parents, we don't really get a love story because the future changed. So everything fucking changed later. Yeah. Yeah. All we know is they kissed at the fish under the sea dance and that's it. Well, we saw it, but I know we saw it. So, you know that, and that's still, again, that's a weird fucking love story. Cause he was trying to watch her undress from fucking tree. He was, yes. I mean, middle of the damn day. Weird ass people with their love stories. So again, that, and then, I mean, what else, you know? um, Yeah. What else do we have? Biffin, his mom's love story. Yeah, There's nothing else. Marty McFly and his mom's love story. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, I say, yeah, Doc here, Brown's yeah. love story is the to me the best one. But the one thing I didn't get, that, and I was watching it earlier today, was that he was told, "Hey, you said you would go pick her up." Um, did he always save her from going into the ravine? Because the the ravine was no. still Clayton reviewing in the future, so he must she must have died. How did he become beloved Claire if? the ravine was still Clayton in the future. That's what I don't understand. Or, or is uh, or could it have changed? And they just didn't know it. Cause you see what I'm saying? No, it was, uh, it's shown Ash ravine in their time in 1885, but in the future, it was called Clayton ravine because of the school teacher that went over. She never goes over, but how could it be on his tombstone? Beloved Clara, if she was supposed to have gone over, but like I said, maybe it did change back to Show Nash, and we just didn't see it because they never, we were never in our real time looking. That no, I thought it was changing something else at the end. It, oh, Eastwood Ravine is what it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it, like it ended up being Eastwood, but the right, end. Right. But but uh, but but no, it was Show Nash, and I think that's what it was because that, because it could never have been Clayton Ravine if if he had went and got her and right. changed the future because he changed the future exactly. So it wasn't that anymore. I mean, because we never got to confirm that, though, is what I'm trying to say. It kind of, you don't really know if it was Clayton Ravine up until that moment or not, because we didn't see it in 1985 time, or, or 1955, really, for that matter. It's kind of weird. I don't That's know. Why I was, like, was kind of confused earlier. I was thinking, well, how could it have been that if he saved her all along? I don't know. I don't know. Wait, how could it have been at when? If he, how could in the future it been Clayton Ravine if he saved her all along? He didn't save her until Marty went back that time. Now you're getting into the things. I know that. Until he went back that time, she hadn't been saved yet. I get it. Brown wasn't back there then. So what do you, I don't know what you're asking. But but here's where, here's I want to get to. When, but when they were in the, in 1955, 
Doc Brown of that time said, and here is Clayton Ravine. Right. He talks about it. Right. So, but, it, but this that, you know, before they went back to 1885. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like everything else. It's before but, that happened. But here you go. But, but they also, in that same time, discover the headstone that says, left, you know, by his beloved Clara, who should have died. So how could she have been beloved by him on his stone and died in that ravine and that horse thing that they stopped? That's what I was trying to say. I'm trying to remember. Is this after they went back, though? No, this is it. Marty comes back right away and says, hey, Doc, I'm still in 1955. And then they go and they look and and they go out to Boot Hill to get the (laughs) DeLorean. And while they're out there, the dog sees Doc Brown's thing. And on it, it says, "Okay, yes. Survived by his beloved Claire. what happened. This is what. So Doc Brown, yes, because remember, Doc Brown has been living in... But hold on, but they it, called it Clayton Ravine when they were looking at the map. It wouldn't have been that if the past had changed. You see what I'm saying? You're confusing me now. No, think of it this way. It's not confusing. Right, no, I get Does it. Does she have it. to die in the ravine for it to be Clayton Ravine? But here's the thing. What I'm saying is, I'm assuming at this point, when he goes... So she hadn't been saved yet. Who hasn't? Clara. She, no. So then when Marty goes back, Doc, I'm assuming he's been living in 1885. This is after, he's still been living there after the fact, after she had died. He went back before that. You know what I mean? I don't think so. No, he went back to September because he died four days later on the time circuits that they put in. So he died on the Monday is when he died and they, right. and he and he went back on a Thursday or Friday or something like that before Monday. So he had the whole weekend to get everything done. So and he was supposed to pick her up and instead she and according to lore went over the edge of the ravine with those horses and died and it was Clayton Ravine in the future. But that's why I was saying how could it be his beloved Clara in the future on his headstone if she should have died there anyways, and the Clay and it been Clayton Ravine at the same time. It it couldn't have been unless somehow she died in, in the ravine after, which doesn't make sense because that's I don't know. I'm I don't just know. saying that that's a hole. That's a hole. Blame the time. flux capacitor on that one. I'm gonna blame it on the the a continuity error. <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on a continuity error. error. Now I gotta rewatch it again just to fucking figure that out. Yeah, you'll see what I'm saying. You'll watch in the you watch in 1955. He'll say Clayton Ravine. Back then, he said, but it was called Shonash Ravine back then. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, why do you, you know? Do you know why it's called Clayton Ravine? Because and, and Marty explains the teacher thing to him. Exactly. That's, yeah. That's when he explains that. And then later on, when they're out at the Boot Hill Cemetery, he sees left by beloved Clara, which is obviously Clara Clayton. So my thing is, how could she have survived that accident and been with him? If it's still named Clayton Ravine, unless she died later on, which I guess we could say, but we don't know. But based on how they showed it, it wouldn't be that way. Right. That's all I'm saying. Well, fuck. Let's move on because we're... I still like the movie. Not going to figure this one out. (laughs) No, we're not. But it's fun to talk about. I mean, mean, what else are you going to talk about? Back to the Future 3 is pretty simple. Do you have any more uh, six packs? I gave you mine. Oh, I'll give you my other ones. Um, Go ahead. Second one. Second one, ZZ Top. The cameo. I love me musician cameos. I love that they had Huey Lewis in the first one with the song on the soundtrack. And then I love this with Double Back. I would say it's kind of sad about the second one that we didn't get a cameo. Yeah, I mean, we had got to see Marion Barry or whatever it was again, but I mean, yeah, it's I guess who are you gonna get for a cameo when you're going thirty years into the future? Yeah, I don't know. Cameo. Because you know, you didn't know that Justin fucking Bieber was going to be a thing then or anything else (laughs) or anybody. (laughs) You didn't know who Britney Spears was. What the fuck? (laughs) But then, you know, so it's like, yeah, I don't know. Like you would have had to get somebody that you would know or, you know, who you know, who they should have got that really would always be touring until they die. Rolling stones. Oh, same difference. Yeah. Who'd you say? I said Aerosmith. Yeah, that'd have been a good one, but but Aerosmith was 
Steven Tyler was just getting out of rehab, I think, in 1985 or something. No, <laughs> actually, no. What they should have done, they should have done Def Leppard since this was in the 80s, part two. Uh, yeah. They should have done Def Leppard. Yeah, true. True. It would have been, yeah. But yeah, cameos are hard. Hard to do. Yeah, that's my other second six pack. I do ZZ I do Top like that. In the movie plan because ZZ Top yeah. kicks ass. And that's a cool little uh, scene, though, the whole thing um, with the with the party mm-hmm. and uh, Buford bringing out his gun. Because, you know, the the whole thing is he wants to kill him over the sum of 80 bucks, which is what um, the horse plus a good bottle of liquor. Is that what it is? And can you even get good bottles of liquor back then? Well, to him, I guess to him, it was good. So, <laughs> good you know, bottle one that doesn't burn the bar top. I <laughs> <laughs> to him it was good so that's all about, but he obviously wasn't drinking anything from that bar i guess is what that means but that's what he's killing him over but but uh obviously marty gets in his way with the pie that was a little tongue-in-cheek humor with the frisbee uh because yeah. that's actually how it was invented the frisbee yeah not that specific scene of course not throwing at a guy with a gun but <laughs> turning the pie tin upside down and throwing it. Now that there. though, again, do you think that's too much of a throwback to the second one with the ashtray? You know, I thought of that and I thought it was interesting, the symmetry of the two scenes, but it makes sense in both of them, how natural it was. I don't think it was so on the nose that yeah, it was crazy. And another nod, cause I'll talk about this. The nods are six packs to me is even before that, when he goes over and a guy lets him use the cult peacemaker and he like hits all the targets after he does. Wild the gunman. Yeah. Because of wild gunman. And we all know that those little light guns with the laser pointers are not accurate. So there's no way he would have been that fucking accurate, you know, especially like duck hunting those. You could hold it up on the screen and cheat. So that's what most people, most people did that. Yeah. Everybody knew the cheat, you know, everybody knew the cheat. Just how it works. <laughs> yeah. But it felt like magic when you played that game the first time, you know, Duck Hunt or something like that. Even Wild I Gunman. Fucking have that. I just gotta get a light gun. You do? Can you get a light gun? You can get one for that, yeah. Can we play there's some a time? Bunch of, there's shooter games on there. I was gonna say we play some time crisis or some shit, you know. <laughs> Anthony has a video game machine that he can load up whatever damn video game in the world and Pretty much no, play it, right? Not every more, well, more older arcade games, machines. Not, not like new, brand new games, but definitely right, older. But the cool shit from back cool in the day. Cool shit. Back cool in the day, shit. we we can like uh, use the Konami code and run Contra. Right. <laughs> I'm sure you have Contra on there, right? I'm sure I, I do. But you don't, I will think with that, you don't even need a load of code because you have endless insert coin button. Oh yeah, for, yeah, but to so. keep your yeah, I guess you can just keep going that way. Yeah, but yeah, it's fun, it's fun games, it's good, fun games. All we're saying, much better than uh, Wild Gunman, I'm sure. Yeah. Or I don't know, I can't believe he has to use his hands though to play it. That's just so it's fucking like a kids weird. game. It's a kids game. <laughs> I mean, is there so, a point? You know what? I, so, and again, I do you think Wild Gunman, the game being in part two? Was the foreshadowing for what part three was going to be about? Yeah. Okay. I never that's thought about I said. that. Actually. I think that that's my thing. The hints in other movies landing in this one. Right. I think those are all hints to. I see. I thought you were just talking about what in he general. Did the they're just hints. as a throwback to the second one. Yeah, they're all hints to what was going to happen um, in this. I think that you know that's why you see all those things. And I and like I said, I don't think it was too heavy handed. I think it really was natural to what the characters would have been and what they would do. Yeah. Um, so that, that to me was perfectly fine. That was me. It's perfectly fine. It's funny. Uh, it's not heavy handed. Like you said, it's considering, you know, as we're talking about, there's a lot of fucking shit. Yeah, there is, but it's duplicated not like, basically in the, from the second to third one. Yeah, I would agree. But there is a lot, but not like, but not scene for scene since it's in the past. I think that's what makes it easier is that they have to do it, but they can't do it exactly the same. Right. You know, it's very similar and it's more of a nod than a facsimile. Right. So did you give, uh, did you give all your six packs yet? No, I've got one left. Okay. I want to know what your other one is. 
Well, I was going to save it, but I mean, I can go for that. Save um, it for what? Well, just give it because it's the because I was thought we could talk about some other things first, but that's okay. Right. Whatever. Um, I mean, I'll give it if you want, but it's my last six pack is I think, and I'm going to give a generic as well, just to let you know, kind of real treads real close to it. Six pack. I think this was a suitable ending. And what I mean by that is the time machine being destroyed, the DeLorean anyways. and Right, but there's still a time machine out there. Well, I'm not, I'm going to get to that in the yeah. generic. All right. But, uh, <laughs> but and I, I think I like the him learning not to be an idiot and run his car into his truck yes. into that Rolls Royce. Agreed. I think, I think this is a suitable ending. Um, um, that's my opinion. Well, I was, first I was just wondering what your other six pack was. Cause I was going to ask you if one of your six packs was Marty with the bullet dance and he starts moonwalking. Cause that oh, was, that is a six, I mean, to a dance scene in there. That is a good scene. That is um, a great scene. So, and, but that's a, that's another hint or a thing each time either in a diner. Now it's in a saloon. He's done something to one of the tannins and then yeah. had to run. That's exactly. kind of the same thing. Um, so I'm going to throw out my generic now too. Go ahead. What as far as the ending? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Like, and I get everything about this movie or all these movies. It's all make believe and suspend, you know, disbelief and all that shit. But the thing is, to me, and this has bugged me. The first time I saw it, and it still bugs me today. I wonder if it's in my generic. I don't know. <clears throat> um, <laughs> okay. But you got to understand, when you're suspending disbelief and you're you're in this world and you're watching it, yeah, you can do that, but there's still certain parameters, okay? Yeah, there are. There's, there are rules. There's, thing that's, there's things that like, okay, I get if you're going to say that, but no, not this. So I'm like still, how the fuck was Doc Brown – able to make that tricked out time machine train fucking fly and do all that shit. Okay. This is what I want to know now. Okay. Okay. So your generic is kind of in my generic. I'll give my generic now to, so that we have it in there. Uh, Cause it's about all the same similar area. So the first thing I have my generic is some of the effects with Doc and the hoverboard I thought were awful. Like the weird green screening effect they did on that. that yeah. That's always bothered me since I saw it back in the day. But also the time, the train time machine. It isn't whether or not it's tricked out and how he got it there. I just thought it was fucking ugly. Yeah. That was ugly. Ugly as shit when it takes off. But I'm going to answer your question as to why I think they did it. Is I think, because when Marty asks him, where are you going, Doc? Are you going to the future? And he says, nah, we've been there. I think they had already made a time machine that doesn't fly, went to the future, and got all the technology so they can make what they want. All right. I think that's I think that's what's happened because you saw their kids. It's been years. It's right, been right. years. So that, that so I'm thinking that's what's happened. That's what I think has happened. I can buy that, but 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 here's my thing: you go to the future and you get all this technology and you make the ugliest shit fucking train. I mean. It's not even cool steampunk. It, it, it ends up being like, I don't know, it almost looks like a Halloween, a corny Halloween train. No. You know what it looks like? What? I'll actually say, I think that's legit. The train. You think it's legit? I'll tell you why. I think it's the type of train he would de- have designed after having been in what their version of... 2020s looked like in part <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what he would have come up with from going to that their created version of the future and Back to the Future Two to him yes. being in the old West. That's what he would have come up with. I, I, I okay, I'll agree with you. That's probably it. Now, here's my other problem with that last scene when the train when the train comes down. He says hi to Marty and introduces his kid. Why didn't he give the hoverboard back? He never gave him the fucking hoverboard, did he? Did he still have it? He had, well, I mean, unless he broke it or got rid of it. Right. But he he had it last, remember, with him and Clara. Why didn't he say, hey, oh, thanks, Marty. 
That would have been a nice little. Oh no, no, no! I, I actually no. He would have destroyed that. You think he would have? I think but he made would, a time machine that flies. Uh, a train yeah, I, I, look, hey, hey, Doc Brown lives by his own set of fucking rules. That's we've what all, I'm we've seen this. Okay, we we've get that. that he breaks the fucking rules constantly. He the fucking rules, but he's again. This is just his thinking. Articles from the it's just like the almanac. Articles from the future cannot be brought back and kept. I don't know, man. He should have gave him his fucking hoverboard back. That should be what. That should be his thing. That should be his thing, man. Just going to leave Marty. Th- that's going to lead him into trouble. Because first of all, you can't ride that thing outside. Because people are going to be all over you wondering what the fuck it is. How'd you get it? Where'd it come from? Somebody's going to try to steal it. And if they steal it, who knows what they're going to fucking do with it. You know what he should tell Marty? Buy Apple stock. He should have. He should at least hook him it. up with that. Say, so, hey, man. You know, I haven't been a good friend to you. I've been kind of a dick about you being able to do things for yourself. Here's something I'll do for you. <laughs> but you know? he doesn't want him to turn into a bad bit from part two. Oh, whatever. At least the buying the Apple stock thing you know, uh, hey, isn't hurting with betting and stuff. Here's what Marty got out of all that. He didn't break his fucking hand. So maybe he's a rock star. We, so that- he can make his own future now. So he did get that. Think about what Marty got out of this, though. Do you think he needs a hoverboard? He's got like normal Kick parents. Ass four by four. Yeah, normal parents now. A successful dad, author, a four by four, no broken hand, so he can still play music. And Elizabeth Shue. I think he's one. I think he's okay. And his nemesis is Flea. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. Who won't I get it could him be worse. Fired. What? Who won't get him fired in the future? Which, you know, and they they do pay that off with her pulling out the piece of paper and it doesn't say fired anymore. So that's Mm kind of nice. I mean, but, and then that's when he takes her and she knows he explained, but it's funny. He does explain to her about the thing and he takes her to the DeLorean and shows her all the pieces. And, you know, he, he, he spills the beans a little and helps her understand. That's, I don't think that's a secret you can keep anymore at this point. For with her, I would say with her, but she's been through a lot of shit during this. I think. She would you take that. the flux capacitor off the ground? See, I was thinking about that earlier too when you talked about him destroying the time machine. Like the flux, Mister capacitor- Fusion or flux capacitor. Here's what I'm worried about. Okay, when you look at this, the flux capacitor is sitting on the ground. Guess what happens when they fucking recover the Terminator's goddamn hand? Oh yes. How'd that shit go? <laughs> Skynet. How did That's that shit gonna come go? to life? <laughs> so what do you think is going to happen here? And guess what's even worse? What if fucking Biff is driving down the road and sees flux capacitor? Somehow he's, he's going to be he genius enough to, to use it. Do with it. But he can sell it. You think about this. Biff fucking finds that thing, doesn't know what it is, gets approached by fucking Libyan third world, third world country that wants to fucking buy it for 40 bucks and a pack of cigarettes. He goes he down to the mall and finds those Libyan terrorists and exactly sells it to them. <laughs> Don't know what it is, but I think you can go into the past with it or future. They're still kicking their box of empty pinball machine parts. <laughs> Pissed off. <laughs> That's it's just it, rolling around with his flux capacitor under his arm. <laughs> I, I yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. So, yeah, so, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like, is it actually destroyed? Because of the fact that, like you said earlier, Marty got the schematics how to fix the DeLorean. Yeah. So True, he has the whole... The that shit? Did he keep that? No, Doc probably kept that shit. He probably owns it himself. It's his own shit now. Well, no, I'm saying the DeLorean, the flux capacitor, all that stuff, he ran over and then took off. So all that sh- shit sitting there on the ground. Yeah, it's not very wise. I'm surprised Doc didn't say, hey, we need to clean this up and put it in the back of his weird-ass train. and Something. At least the important parts, you know? The yeah. Mr. Fusion, the, part the that flux sends you back capacitor, in time. and the time circuits, probably. Those are the important parts. Like, you want to you take the things that make time travel possible. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's his own words. <laughs> But I'm guessing he has one kick-ass one in that train that we didn't get to see. That's the payoff we didn't get, isn't it? We didn't get to see the new flux capacitor because I'm guessing there's a new one in there. And oh. it probably is purple arc or something because that it's, had that purple design. It's, it's probably, probably the tiny little fucking chip. 
at this point. Oh yeah, he went to the future. Yes. Like yeah, we'll just. <laughs> he got it's smaller. a half inch long fucking thumb drive. No, you go in there and you just see an iPhone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the fucking thing. <laughs> no, this is what makes it to. possible. I just dock it here and I pick. What I want. This is what makes music possible. <laughs> the iPod. <laughs> oh man. Holy so should shit. they remake Why? these? I'm sorry. Man, iPod dropped the fucking ball when they came out. Why? Can you imagine a back? Oh, that tagline that slogan. When he's shows him in the back of the car and there's an iPod, and if they had gotten Doc Brown and Marty in that shit, this is what makes music possible. Yes. Oh, you're oh, right. That, that would, would have been, been amazing. Although their commercials where they had that guy with his record collection and they said it took the whole thing was pretty it, yeah. it worked. Yeah, it was pretty but pretty good. But you're been, right, that would have been epic. You know who needed that? Not iPod. You know who should have used that, and maybe they would have been in the market too. You know who I'm thinking? Hmm. Zune. If oh, Zune would have used that. <laughs> I fucking forgot about Zoom. Microsoft, wow. Microsoft might have sold a few more units. Had they hey, had- I wish I could go back in time, buy some Zoom stock. How about that? <laughs> Microsoft stock, yes, but not Zoom. But they, but if they had used that, they probably would have sold some units because, you know, this is what makes music possible. And then they open, look it back and they flip it on. And you just see a Zoom lit up in the thing. That would be cool. And then have the special Back to the Future edition. If anybody had come up with that, it would have worked. I don't know why nobody ever did. What we need right now is a time machine to go back to 2006 exactly. or whatever it is. <laughs> you know. I mean, you could have fucking done, like, so many things. Yeah. You that fucking jar of herbal life back there. This is what makes weight loss possible. This Not is anything. what makes a great sandwich possible. Heinz ketchup. Boom. <laughs> We're right, man. Wow. Been... <laughs> That's a... This is what makes a great party possible. Zima. <laughs> oh, God, I got to tell you. So we just watched the first episode of that 90s show tonight. I was going to watch it. You're going to spoil it. Great. Go ahead. I'm not going to. Well, I got to tell you one thing is all. Okay. That. Uh, so this isn't really spoiling anything. There's a scene where Eric and Donna are sitting with Eric's parents in the kitchen. Yeah. Eric's drinking a fucking Zima. Oh, that makes sense. It's nineties. It's nineties, but it's Eric. Yeah. Drinking the Zima. So his wife's having a beer. He's having a Zima. Well, that, that sounds like your relationship too. It does. I know. Although I you drink it. beer. I'm, I I'm do. I, I drink manly shit, but I also love me some fucking Zima. All right. It's just, it tastes like my childhood, not my childhood, <laughs> but my, you know, late. I love that. Early, early 20s, it reminds me of my Baba when I was a baby, when they used like, to feed me. <laughs> Well, I had one. I was 10 years old. They fed me malt liquor when I was 10. Yeah. Colt so, 45. <laughs> I thought Zima was a malt beverage. It is. Okay. It's, so, it's something different. Thank you very it's much. Something different. I know. <laughs> so, I, you know what time of the show it is. It's where you got to pick something. I got to give my last uh, six pack. I didn't get oh, it. Oh, he has a six pack. See, he's so slow. I can't even keep up with him. I know. Monday. Go ahead, man. Sit it out there. Um, I'm in the slow group. Um, Doc Brown's whiskey fiasco. Oh, like that was as Tom and Jerry as you can get. The wake up juice or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> when clothespin on his nose, like all that shit. Like that's straight out of a cartoon. Uh, you know that burned his inside. That's why he woke up with a reflex because mm-hmm. it was straight fire in his gullet. Yep. <laughs> it was like make him, make him. And so yeah, he does have a reaction. I don't stuff. know. Yeah, I think that's a that's probably you're right. That's probably the most cartoonish that this epi- that this movie got is that particular thing, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, the shooting and the jumping on the spittoon. But I'd that say, was not quite as cartoonish as that. So, what do you think is the most cartoonish thing in the second one? Um. Ooh. Um. Biff's call- henchmen are pretty cartoony. The way they run. Like idiots. I was gonna say just the whole scene with Biff with the baseball bat growing behind his back. Yeah, is very. Like, yeah, the whole that the Griff Griff was a cartoon character. He was like the dog Spike in an old uh, Tom and Jerry cartoon, mm-hmm. and 
talk like a moron and, and did the whole bat, you know. You know, the thing is too, I will tell you, it, it, this is something and I, I don't even think I ever thought about this until now because you brought up on the past episodes how Biff's your least favorite character, all this stuff. Each one of those, I still refer to him as Biff. All the characters. That's true. I always, it's Biff. I don't fucking care if you want to call him Tanner or what. It's Biff. Buford Tannen, though, I have said Buford because yeah. he is distinctly different Biff. in that character. Still Biff, though. But it is still Biff, yes. Uh, yeah, like, all right. But let's get to the thing you love the most. You know what, what it is. You want? Memorabilia. What do you want? Well, I'm asking you what you want. I'll tell you right now what I want. What is it? I want Marty's bulletproof vest plate. That is pretty cool. That would be pretty sweet. Um, is that is rustic? very sweet. It's rustic. It's actually something you could display or hang up, but also tell people what that actually is would be cool. Um, I'm torn on this one. But I think what I would want is his Peacemaker. Okay. The free one he got from the guy. Yeah. Because that would be cool to have just because. What about the boots the guy eating? Well, those are pretty cool. If they were half eaten, even better. Right. By the bear. Just like, hey, the boots. Or his Nikkei's that he wore in the show movie. Nikkei's. What are yeah. those Nikkei's? Got them from an Asian feller? Oh, man. <laughs> there was some racist talk. There definitely was. Um, I mean, we've glossed over that, haven't we? Well, yes, because I don't think we need to. Don't need to harp on it. What's wrong with it? You know what? It's not as heavy handed as some other movies. Not at all. Just going to throw it out there. Um, so I'm not going to like go all, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go all social, social justice warrior on it. I will tell uh, you a, a second runner up cool piece of memorabilia would be go ahead the clayton ravine sign that would be cool or any of the signs any sign (laughs) well you know what my other thing i thought would be really cool but it's so fucking huge the The clock the clock yeah before it's on the tower i'd love that could you imagine putting that in your like downstairs room somewhere Oh jesus (laughs) big fucking clock that'd be awesome of course they wouldn't want it to ring because it fuck your house up. Yeah, I wait for lightning to strike. Oh yeah, but no, the clock was a second for me. But I know that last that would never happen. So mm. there we go. All right, are you ready, man, to rate yep, this up? I'm ready. Let's rate it. You going first or me? Um, I'll go first. I go think ahead. You, I think you went first last time. So yeah. Um. So me personally, I I like part three. It's my least favorite in the series, but not by a lot. Hmm. Just because I liked part two. Obviously, part two is a big drop off from part one, but you really almost can't help that. Part one is like, if it had been one and done, good. You know, even though it was so good, it had to have a sequel. And it deserved one, obviously. Part three, um, partly just, I mean, the, the old West is not my, you know, there's, there's some very few Western setting movies that I like and shows. Um, but I'm okay with that actually in this, it it doesn't like, it's nothing that spoils me, like spoils it for me or anything. It's more like part two. I still love because even though going into the future could mess it up and it does in some ways at the same time, it's fun and goofy and it, you know, imaginative I'll say in a lot of ways. Um, So for this part three, I'm just, I'm going to give it a 16. So I gave part two a 17. I'll bump this down one to a 16. All right. Still still really good. Just, you know, it's a good I, movie. I would, yeah. I would pick part two over part three if I was watching one of them. Well, I kind of, when I really think of this, I think of this a little bit like The Matrix. The first one is just so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Right? And the second one, eh. And, the, and if you remember, The Matrix released the second and third really close together too. Yep. And there was a little bit of fatigue, I think. And I think the same thing happened to Back to the Future. While it helped it, but at the same time, I think it put some people in fatigue on it. And so that's why you don't see the numbers stay strong as the first one. 
you know, or second one really and the third one. Well, but surprisingly, see the, yeah. sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but surprisingly, when you look at these, um, it gets a much higher Rotten Tomatoes rating than part two. Yes, it does. Pretty close it, in IMDb. I know this. So um, I, I personally think if I were rating them, the first one's the best. To me, the third one's the second best. And the second one is my least favorite of them. Okay. I, I like, like I said, I like the Wild West angle. I like somehow it's more genuine in some ways. Um, I, I think it's better when it got older. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Because, you know, there, you can do a lot more when you get older with things and you can, because you know more about that than you can if you go in the future, like we've already said. So to me, I feel comfortable there. I'm just very happy. And I think you got the best performance out of the guy who played Biff when he plays Buford. I think you got your best performance there. I think Michael J. Fox did a really good job of playing um, Seamus as well in here. Um, I think, like I said, there's some great performances in this one that, that I didn't think I got. my favorite. I know you didn't like it. That that That's, that whole part, it just wasn't my favorite at all. It was okay. What? Well, whatever. There always has to be a baby in each one, if you notice. Except, I don't know, the second one there wasn't a baby. The first and the last one there was. Um, but but it's but to me it's my it's my second favorite one out of them all. And so for that, I'm actually rating this one a little higher than I had before. And I'm giving this one a 19. All right. Because I think it ends strong. Well, that gives us 17 and a half for this one. Ooh, part two was 16 and a half. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. What's I, that I, make it? Makes it 17 and a half. No, I meant like, is there anything interesting? That's there? What makes it? What's interesting here? What's around a 17? Um, completely, totally different fucking movie. Chasing Amy, 17.75. Wow. <laughs> they gave it a 13 and a half because you're douche um try to see if there's anything uh 17 and a half dirty dancing i gave that probably as high as this you gave it a 23 yeah i was gonna say i knew i gave that a high score that's a good movie um let's, i'm trying to look at something where we weren't that far off on i i would watch dirty about, dancing yeah. again before i watch this white man can't jump 17 that's not a bad movie um see some of these it's like you know, it, it's really weird. Anything in the 17 range that I'm looking at, we're both so fucking far off. <laughs> One of us is way lower than the other. Well, way give out. me an example. Um, so 17 and a half, Heathers. You gave it a 12, I gave it a 23. Uh, My Girl, I gave it a 12, you gave it a 22 and a half. <laughs> uh, it's like the, the, it, it works out, though. <laughs> it does. It's just also like, I mean... Serendipity, 17.75. We were actually, you gave it 16 and a half. I gave it a 19. That's pretty, I actually was fairly close together. Set of a woman, 17.25. Trading places, 17.625. What did I give it? Which one? Trading places, that that weird. gave that 18.25 because that's when you were doing your decimal shit. I almost did that today. I changed fucking my nerd. mind. I was at 18 and a half. Fucking nerd. I changed it to um, 19 last second. You've got mail seventeen point two five. Yeah, good movie. Clueless seventeen point two five. I gave out like a fourteen or something. Benny and June seventeen point seven five. Excellent movie. Well, we were right there. You were seventeen. I think. And a half I think what I'm seeing a what I'm seeing here as a, a trend is that movies that are fairly good but not home runs that seems mm-hmm. to be somewhere between sixteen and a half and eighteen. We have a lot in that area because we watch a lot of good movies, but they right. aren't like super duper. They're not in that stratosphere like Back to the Future is, you know, but yeah. they're also not shit like um, Fast, Too Fast, Too Furious or something like oh, that. Oh, I'll give you I'll give you an interesting one to compare. Yeah. 17 and a half Days of Thunder. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's now, yeah. Again, that's interesting to me because again, Back to the Future Three. I'm not a Western person. Days of Thunder. I am definitely not a fucking NASCAR person. But what did you give it at all? Days of Thunder. I gave that a 17. You gave an 18. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they're a good movie. It's a good movie. 
It is what it is. Yeah. Rowdy's awesome. That's what I'm saying. Rowdy so, Birds. There's there's some there's some. I mean, we haven't done. I don't think we've done any other time travel movies before this. So that I can remember. So there's nothing I compare compare it to that way. Yeah, um, you're right. There's no other. I mean, there's like we said, the closest thing is big, but it's not a time travel movie as much as it is a fantasy date rape. Date rape. Yeah, it's, yeah. Molestation. Yeah, it's not a time. That's not like a oh, time travel movie. But I gotta tell you, so I'll just give you this, just because it's random. But our first episode ever, Empire Records, seventeen and a half. Huh. Of course. <laughs> Our first one ever. Hey, go back and listen to that, people, if you oh, want to oh, find out. Oh, don't listen to it. We, we like we suck now, but we sucked in a different way, worse way back then. But it's out there if you want to go back and, you know, make give fun it a of listen. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Are we good there? I think that's it. All right. We would like to thank you for listening. We also want to remind you to join our Patreon so you can get some of the bonus content and other fun stuff. Remember, you can go to sodapopcultureclub.com for all things related to the show, including your chance to make those movie suggestions we mentioned earlier, as well as our episode schedules there. We also run all them social media type things like Instagram and whatnot. Anything else, Anthony? Thank you. God bless. Please listen again because we will do this shit again. Yeah. Actually, the next one's going to be the wrap up. We're going to wrap this shit up. All right. Goodbye.